Okay, hi folks, this is the first in a series of videos that has a look at the advanced higher physics paper. Um, it's not a walkthrough of a, an individual paper on its own, it's more of a look at the sort of questions that come up year after year in the paper, and we will look at a particular key area in each one. So in this first video, we'll have a look at calculations on equations of motion using calculus methods. So it's, it's usually question one in the paper, and we'll have a look at two examples of that in this video. So there's lots of places you can find past papers. There's the SQA website, numerous other physics teachers' websites, but this is the Calder Glen High School website, and I'm just clicking on Advanced Higher Physics Past Papers, and this is the 2022 paper, question one. And if you want to have a go at the question first, then make sure to pause and then come back when you're ready. So during a short test run, a dragster accelerates along a straight track and the test starts at t equals zero. And during the test run, the velocity of the dragster is given by this relationship. V equals 6.6 .6 t squared plus 2.2 t. And we have to determine the acceleration of the dragster at t equal to 4. 0.1 seconds. Well, if it's acceleration we're looking for, and we've got a relationship for the velocity, then because acceleration is the rate of change of velocity, is dv by dt, then we're going to have to differentiate this relationship. And using your rules of differentiation from maths, you multiply by the power, and the power goes down by 1. So 2 times 6.6 .6 is 13.2. And the power goes down by 1, so that's 13.2t plus 2.2. And then all we have to do, because that's the relationship for the acceleration, is sub in for t equals 4.1. So 13.2 times 4.1, add the 2.2, and if you do that on your calculator, you get a final answer of 56 metres per second squared. And if we compare that with the SQA finalised marking instructions, we can see that it's worth three marks. So one mark for differentiating, one for substituting, and one for the final answer with the correct units. And our answer is rounded to two significant figures, because the numbers in the question have got two significant figures. OK, 1A part 2, we have to determine the distance travelled by the dragster between t equals 0 and t equals 4.1 seconds. Well, distance gone, remember, is the area under a velocity time graph, so we are integrating here. We're going to integrate the velocity relationship. So I'll just remind myself what that is. V equals 6.6t .6 squared plus 2.2t, and we're going to integrate both sides with respect to time. So integrate V by dt, and integrate the right-hand side with respect to time, and then perform the integration. Remember, when you integrate, you raise the power of t by 1 and divide by that power. So 6.6t .6 cubed divided by 3 plus 2.2t squared divided by 2. And you should, of course, always add a constant of integration, but in this case, that constant will be 0 because when t equals 0, s equals 0, so c will be equal to 0. So let's leave that out and simplify and substitute in for t equals 4.1. So 6.6 .6 over 3 is 2.2 .2 times the 4.1 cubed plus 2.2 over 2 is 1.1 .1 times t squared, and t is 4.1, so 4.1 squared. And if you do all of that on your calculator, you get an answer of 170 metres, rounded again to two significant figures, because the numbers in the question are two sig figs. Let's have a look at the SQA answers. So it's one mark for integrating, one for substituting, and one for the correct answer with the correct units. Also notice anything that's bracketed in the SQA marking instructions is not required to get the mark, so the constant of integration is bracketed there, so you don't necessarily have to show it. You can still get full marks by showing the integration, substitution and the correct final answer. Okay then, so one part B, this is a bit unusual here, 
on the axis below sketch the graph to show the variation of velocity of the dragster with time between t equals 0 and t equals 4.1 seconds and numerical values are not required on the velocity axis. This is only worth one mark, but one way of doing this is to sub in for different values of t and see what you get for v. So when t is 0, v will be 0. When t is 1, v will be 8.8. .8. When t is 2, if you plug 2 into that relationship, you'll find out that the velocity is equal to 30.8. And if we do 4.1 and you sub that in, then your velocity is 148 metres per second. So the velocity is increasing at a much greater rate than the time is. So it will be a curve. And remember, we don't have to show any values. Numerical values are not required on the velocity axis. But we do have to show the curve up to 4.1 seconds. So let's put a wee dotted line there. And it's going to be an increasing curve, starting it from zero, and it must reach the 4.1 on the x-axis. So, that's for one mark there. That's quite tricky. I think that's an A mark. Right, that was the 2022 paper. Let's have a look at the 2021 paper. Question one, and see the similarities or the differences between the questions. So this is a roller coaster ride and again we're given a relationship for velocity and using calculus methods we have to determine the acceleration at t equals 4 seconds and for part b the displacement at t equals 4 seconds. So same question, different relationship, different numbers. So same process, we're going to differentiate in part a to get the relationship for the acceleration and then sub in and we'll integrate for part b. So firstly, let's make the statement that acceleration is the rate of change of velocity and then we'll differentiate the velocity relationship. So the 8 disappears and then we're going to multiply the 4 by the power. That's 2 times 4 is 8 and the power goes down by 1. Then the next bit's quite tricky, is the 2 thirds times the 3, which is 2 times t squared. Multiply by the power, and the power goes down by 1, so 2t squared. Then we're going to sub in for t equals 4 seconds, so 8 times 4 minus 2 times 4 squared. And if you do that in your calculator, it gives you an answer of, surprise, surprise, 0 meters per second squared. Now don't forget your units there, because if we have a look at the SQA marking instructions, notice on the right hand side there it says unit of acceleration required or maximum two marks. You would only get two marks there for the differentiation and the substitution. You need the unit. And in part B, what's the displacement? Well, displacement we're going to integrate. The velocity relationship. So displacement is the area under the velocity time graph or the integral of velocity with respect to time and then let's integrate that initial relationship. So we're integrating 8 plus 4t squared minus 2 over 3t cubed with respect to time. Now if you use your rules of integration, remember the power goes up by 1, that becomes 8t. The 4t squared becomes 4t cubed over 3, or 4 over 3t cubed. And the last bit becomes minus 2 over 3t to the 4 divided by 4, which makes it 2 over 12 times t to the power of 4. That's pretty tricky as well. And don't forget to add your constant of integration. That constant will be equal to zero, remember, because at t equals zero, s equals zero. Then all we have to do is substitute in for t equals four seconds. So eight times four, four over three times four cubed minus two over twelve times four to the power of four. Tricky one on your calculator, but it gives you an answer of 75 meters. Let's have a look at the SQA answers. 
there it is 75 meters and again on the right hand side ignore poor form with integration so don't worry too much about your calculus notation or your constant of integration or your limits as long as you can integrate substitute and get the final answer with the correct unit you're good to go and watch your significant figures as well two sig figs in the question two sig figs in your answer that's it that's what question one has looked like for about the past six years or so make sure you go and have a look at some of the other past papers and in the next video we'll have a look at some examples from question two that's all about rotational motion we'll see you in the next one